over the auditorium. Thank you for being a part this morning. We're, we're talking this morning, um, continuing our Frozen Marriage series, and we'll turn this down just a little bit. Um, last week, we, we spoke on Let It Go, getting past some of our hurts, some of maybe our failures, some of maybe the things that we talk about in our marriages that hinder us from being effective in everything that we want to be within our relationships. This week, I'm talking to those um, who are maybe who have been dating or someone who is in any type of relationship. You say, well, I'm single. Well, you're in a relationship, okay? You're in a relationship of trying to get into a relationship. That's where you're at in your life, right? And you say, well, I'm married. Well, you better be in a relationship, and it better be the one you're married to. You say, well, well, I'm just friends with benefits right now. Well, you need to figure out whether you're in a relationship or not or what you want to do with it. Um, no matter where you're at in your life right now, I think what I'm going to speak this morning is going to help you. I believe this, this message this week, I talked to several of the people as I was putting it together and, and going over, and I, I rewrote the message like three times. I'm like, I'm just not comfortable with where it's going. I, I want to change it, and I changed everything around several times this week because I wanted this morning to communicate to you most effectively what I feel is what I need to say about relationships. Uh, there's three questions first about relationships that I want to kind of ask you about and talk about. The first question is this. In your relationship, number one, what am I looking for? I want you to write these down, maybe put them in your phone. I don't care if you text them to somebody. I don't care what you do. But I want you to hold these, hold these thoughts. In your relationship, whether you're married, whether you're single, whether you're dating, whatever the case may be, what am I looking for? In this relationship or in this dating, whatever it is, what am I going into this for? What is my purpose behind this? Is this someone that I am dating for marriage material, or is this someone I am dating for some other reason? And if you say, well, I don't use the term dating, I use the term courting. I'm kind of just intermingling them, okay? Please don't get semantics with me this morning. So courting, whichever one. The person you are wanting to possibly spend time with to figure out if they are someone you will spend the rest of your life with. Whatever the case and term you use, that's who I'm speaking to. For those of you that are married this morning, I have to ask this same question. What are you looking for within your marriage? What are you in the marriage for right now? What is it you seek? What is it that you need out of the marriage? Number two, here's the second question I want you to ask. What am I willing to give? What am I willing to give? See, each relationship that we go into, there's going to be a give and take. There's going to be a time to, to make things work, to make, it, to make um, everyone humble. You're going to have to learn to give up some things. Maybe that give up is your friend time. Maybe what you have to give up is your rolling with your buddies time. Maybe it's the cruising on a Friday night because she wants to go see a movie and you want to be with your friends. Maybe it's something different. Maybe it is a hobby that you have to put on a back burner. But to make a relationship work, you have to ask yourself, what am I willing to give up to make this work? Because if you're not willing to give up everything, it's not going to work. You say, well, I can't give up everything. I'm my own human. I retain my rights. Right? That's kind of how we feel about it. I retain who I am. No, the question is going into a relationship or in one, you have to realize that everything is on limits and not off limits to make it work. If it's something you need to change or to give or to, to, to reschedule in your life in some capacity, if that's what it takes to make a relationship work, love that is in you, if it's the right relationship, should say, I am willing to work to change this. Number three, kind of bleeds into number three. How do I change? I think this is our hardest part. I think this is our hardest part. Many of us recognize within the relationships we're in what's going wrong, don't we? If something's not right, we understand where we're going wrong in a relationship. And also, maybe you're someone who has bounced from relationship to relationship to relationship. You've dated 550 people. Matter of fact, Burke County, you've gone through the yearbook. And it's no longer a viable option. You've moved to McDowell or you've moved to Catawba because there's just nobody left. Right? Maybe that's you today. I'm not talking about eBay, James. I don't know who we're talking about today. I just called him out, man. Just bam, right on top. 
just kidding, you, James. So, so anyway, maybe you're, and, and maybe the question is, every relationship's falling apart, and, and it's always the other person's fault. No, it's not. There may be a problem that you're not willing to change, and you need to ask yourself today, you know what, I'm going to listen, because maybe I do need to change, and I want to know how to do it. So ask yourself those three questions about relationships. I think in America today, we've gotten so much wrong when it comes to marriage and relationships. We focus so much anymore on the wedding and we forget the marriage. Have you ever seen a reality show based upon somebody's just mundane, everyday life? No, but you'll see Say Yes to the Dress. You'll see three weddings or th whatever that, that show is. My poor wife makes me watch those sometimes. It's horrible. It's people just sitting around critiquing other people's weddings about what they don't like. And I'm like, what's even worse than them sitting there critiquing everything they don't like? I'm sitting here on the couch having to watch it. <laughs> Makes no sense. Okay? And they make these reality shows, and it's always about the wedding. Okay? How many of us on E! Hollywood have seen all the specials about all these people's, what? Their weddings. Because there's so much made about these big days. And, and nowadays there's so much money pumped into these massive days. We have people going in and they're buying twenty and thirty and fifty thousand dollar wedding dresses. And I'm like, holy cow, it's a dress. I will sew it for you for that. <laughs> Give me material. I'll buy the material. I will sew. I don't know how to sew, but I will learn for fifty grand. Yeah, it's crazy. And we focus everything and every resource. I know. I was engaged at one time. I was engaged for a solid year. I heard about weddings for a solid year. Okay? Here's the thing about a dude, okay? The wedding don't matter to us. We don't care if we wear blue jeans and flip flops. Okay? We're focused on one thing only, and it's the after party. Okay? Let's be honest, dudes. Y'all can go and back me up here. That's all we... We don't care about if we have a cummerbund or a vest. Do you think we give a flip? We won't be wearing it in a couple of hours. I don't care. <laughs> and we focus so much on this wedding time. And we don't even really focus on the marriage aspect. Because, see, the wedding is a blown up... Let's be honest, it is a blown up big day that is nothing like real life. We wear clothes that we never wear at any other time, right? We act ways we never ever acted any other time. We pose for pictures that we will never pose for in that pose again. It's this one day. Now, granted, get me. I, I, listen, I'm, I'm not anti-wedding. I think they're great. I think they're marvelous. And I think there's merit to them. Don't get me wrong with that. I'm just saying we focus on these weddings. We focus on everything around that big day, and all you hear about is this big day. When in all actuality, your marriage, the biggest day, will be the days after the wedding day to beyond. Those are the days you don't see when you're fighting over which bill do we pay because we don't have enough in our checkbook to pay both. See, those days of the wedding... It's not the same day as when we're fighting over where did we go wrong with our kid? Why did they run away from home? That's not a wedding day. That's a reality day. Yeah. A reality day and a wedding day is not the same day where we go down to a funeral home and pick out a casket for a small child who died in the delivery room. That's not on our wedding day. I think we really need to focus more on what happens inside of a marriage and what we build our relationship on rather than the special day. I think if we'll change that viewpoint, we can have more successful marriages. The Bible says this in Matthew chapter number 7, verse 24 through 27. Here's my message today. I'm preaching on, do you want to build a snowman? Here's the thing about a snowman, okay? Okay. A snowman has some great merit. It's awesome. I'd say probably everybody who is in here who's been in a snowstorm has built one. We've all rolled up together a snowman, whether it was weird, oddly shaped looking or perfectly round. It didn't matter. We've all built one. The problem you have to realize about a snowman is this. They will not last. They're going to fall apart. They're going to melt away. They're going to crumble. And one day you will look and say, where did it go? 
It will just be left a heap of but there's a little there's a little song that we all sing. The wise man built his house upon a rock. How are y'all saying? Come on, sing with me. The wise man built his house. Wow. <laughs> built his house of, and the rains came tumbling. Y'all remember that, right? The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came. You got the little hand motion, all that. But the, but the end of the song says, but the house on the rock stood firm. This is what the Bible says. There was a wise man who built his house upon a rock. The rains descended. The floods came. The winds blew. And they beat upon that house. A type of storms in our life. Things that are unexpected. Things that roll in. Things that batter us. Things that shape us if we're not careful. But it says this. The house did not fall because it was founded upon a rock. It had a foundation that was more than something that crumbled had a foundation that was sure. And we also know in biblical typology, a rock is a type of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He is the rock of ages. He is our rock. So this is a house that is built upon Jesus. But the Bible says this in verse number 26. But the foolish man, be a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat on the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. It built on something that wasn't solid. It built on something that moved. It built on something that could shift positions. Here's one of the things that's awesome about Jesus and the Word of God because it's so pure and it's been around for so long. Jesus is a constant. He doesn't change. The Bible says, I am the Lord and I change not, is what the Bible says. So when you build a foundation that's focused on the Bible and the Word of God and Scripture and who God is and the gospel in your life, you will build on a foundation that doesn't settle or shift at all. It is already settled. See, a snowman or a sandcastle, whatever it is, it's built. When something hits it, it starts to change shape and it morphs and anything built on top of it will slowly crumble and will fall. I think this morning, I think I've coined a new term for everybody. How many of y'all have ever seen somebody get into a relationship and you knew the minute they got in, <laughs> not going to last? You ever had that? Anybody ever had that? You saw me like, yeah, that one's going to be gone quick. Right? We see it maybe in celebrity news all the time. I, I, was, I was in some sports page the other day, and it said at the bottom, Leo and Rihanna hook up. I was like, snowman, that's a relationship. It ain't going to work. So now every time I've got to think it, every time I see somebody that's not going to work, and they just know, I'm like, snowman, that's, that's what their new term for relationship is, snowman. And so we see these, we see these snowman relationships. And listen, as you're sitting there right now, you know people who have been in them. You have watched them and you thought, oh my goodness, this is train wreck city. Do I be a friend and tell them or do I just sit back and watch the carnage, which is the best, you know? That's how we kind of live our life. But I don't want us to be that way within the church because I don't think we have to be that way. I would rather us have a relationship that's built on something great. It's not just crazy hookup and crazy breakups one after another. It's built on something that lasts. Here's the problem we have. We tend to try to build on things that are temporal and won't last, like this one. You can't build a relationship just on fun. You can't build a relationship on fun. You say, well, you know what? When I'm with her, we have just the best time. We go bowling. She goes to the football games with me. We have a blast together. It's so much fun. That's great. I think you should have fun with the person you're in a relationship with. But if that's the only thing that we actually have as a ground of what we need to build as something to sustain on, fun will break down because I need everybody's response here and you know it. Marriage has hard times that are not fun. Can you get an amen? That's right. All the married people can clap on that one. Every marriage, you will go through times where you cry and you struggle and you fight and you try your best to get your head above water and you may not understand how tomorrow is going to come. Those are not fun times in anybody's life. And if your marriage is only based upon if it's a good time or not, that is a foundation that is slowly going to crumble. Let's be honest. Putting a snowman together is a lot of fun. You get somebody else to help you and you roll it and you pack it and it's great, but eventually it's going to fade away. Sometimes we have 
relationships that are built just based upon fun. Number two, relationships are built on physicality. Some people's relationships are built solely on the looks of someone else. They're built on the sensuous nature of someone else. They're built on something other than anything deeper than skin in their relationships. We know this. I've met people many times. I've met young boys who were surrendered to preaching in the ministry and had the touch of God on their life and was going to do massive things, probably plant a church and do great things. And along came a girl who was a beautiful girl, but she did not have the priorities and did not have the godliness that she, someone should have had for that boy to look at her. And before you know it, he dropped his guard and said, well, my, my personal holiness doesn't matter as much. Look how beautiful she is. Do you, can you imagine me taking her around and meeting all my friends? And they end up marrying and getting into relationships that are bad based solely upon the looks of someone else. Here's what the Bible says, beauty fades and all is vanity. Now listen, I'm not saying go marry the ugliest stick you can find. I'm not. I'm not. This is Eastburg. In Eastburg you can find many. I'm just kidding. I tag Eastburg all the time. Y'all know that. I'm not saying that. I believe that the person in your life that God puts you with as, as, as one and who you choose to marry, I believe you will have a love for and a relationship with, and I believe you will believe they're beautiful. There's no doubt about that. So don't be like, hey, they're ugly, but they're good persons. So I'm going to marry them because they're good. No, you, there, there will be mutual attraction. I believe that. I agree with that. But if it's based only on the physicality and the looks of someone else, that's going to fade. For others, it's the sexual side of the physicality. Sex alone will not stand in a marriage you can't build a marriage based solely on physical touch. What if something happened where you could no longer have physical touch? I know a preacher right now. I know a preacher right now on his honeymoon night headed to the hotel. Got in a head-on collision with a tractor trailer. And his wife was paralyzed from the chest down from the night of their honeymoon until today. And he looked at me one day with my dad and he said, if I had to do over again, I would marry her again, even knowing what I already know. He said, I didn't marry her for what she could give me. I married her because of who she is. Do you have that type of marriage where if physicality is something, and believe me, physicality is a great thing. Sex is a great thing. It's designed by God. It's for you. Hallelujah. It is great. There's no doubt about it. Some of y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm a married man. It's okay. It's a great thing. But if it was gone, could you still love your spouse? If their physical appearance changed, let's be honest, guys. Many of us, our physical appearance has changed. I was 200 pounds when I got married. And I've put on just a couple pounds since. My physical appearance has changed. I had a head full of hair when we got married. Okay? I will not bend down because that spotlight will blind you bouncing. Just who I am. I apologize. Saving you the trouble. You know what? Physical appearances will change. They're going to change. And before you laugh, we can look at your wedding pictures. I have a screen. Don't laugh too loud. We will see them next week. We've all changed, right? So if we're built solely upon this physical nature of what we see, and it's like, well, as long as she stays thin, I'll love her. You've got the wrong idea of love, sir. That's the wrong idea of love. It's not based on physicality. That's something that will crumble and fade. Number three, don't, don't get into a relationship based on the opinion of family and others. God, I've seen this so many times. Family pushed someone on someone just over and over, and they didn't want to get married to them, and they didn't want to get in a relationship with them. But family and friends are like, that's their person. That's just for you. And they finally just, to get people off their back, entered into a relationship. Before you know it, they got married, and they were miserable because they didn't follow their heart and what God wanted. They went solely on the opinion of someone else. That is something that will be a miserable life for you. The worst mistake is to go into a relationship because someone else wants you to. Number four, never right to build a relationship on desperation. Desperation. You feel trapped. You feel you need help. You feel lonely. You feel like you're too old or too young or in between. I got to get me a man. I want to say this to all the girls and guys here. Okay? Okay. Your age should have nothing to do with the day that you get married. Don't come up and say, well, I need to be married by the time I'm 25 to be successful. 
has nothing to do with it. If it takes you to 30 to find the person who completes you in your life, I will tell you right now, you will be happy that you waited until you were 30 to find that person. That's right. That's right. Don't get desperate. You say, well, I'm, I'm someone who's went to a tragic divorce, or I've had a, I'm a widow or a widower, and this guy's showing me attention. Now listen, I don't like him. He stinks. He doesn't clean his fingernails very well, but he's, he's, you know what? He's my last hope. No, don't settle. Don't settle because you're desperate. That's something that will crumble and fall. Fifth one, don't marry someone or get into a relationship over pure profit over what you can get out of the other person. Another word we term for this would be gold digger. I'm going to talk about today. Now I ain't saying she go. I did not sing that song. Y'all didn't hear that. Prophet. We see people that marry others solely based on what they have and love and affection and a relationship and an actual tie-in with each other in spiritual realm is non-existent. And when you talk to them, it's easy to find because it won't be... It won't be long. They have to go to what their relationship is all about. Because out of the uh, abundance of the mouth, the heart speaketh. And with someone, you talk to them, and, and you get past the first little, hey, he's great or whatever. And then all it can go back to is, man, his family's loaded. He's got so much money. He's done so many good things for me because of this. And when that's all it can go back to, that kind of tells you where their heart is dwelling in the relationship. Problem is, profit can come and profit can go. We saw that with Job in the Bible. Everything you have can be taken in a day. Will you still love that person in a relationship? So we see what not to build our homes on. Not to build our relationships. You say, well, I'm, I'm single and I want to start dating. Don't. Just check yourself. Ask yourself those original three questions going into any type of relationship that you have. See why you're actually even going into it. But here are some solid foundations that I do want you to build on, and these are biblical foundations, and I believe it's going to help us all today. Now, with these, these actually affect married people and unmarried people, or anywhere in between. Ask yourself these things about building your foundation. Number one, according to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, the Bible says, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Here's what the Bible says. One of the solid foundations that you can build on is this. Timing. Timing. Timing is everything in your life. Timing. You say, what do you mean by timing? Here's what I mean. Don't rush yourself into something that you don't need to be in just because you feel you want to be in it. Wait. Make sure you're making the right decisions. Make sure the season of your life is where it needs to be to begin a relationship. Here's the thing about a relationship, Rich. It is something that you have to start and you have to grow. Relationships don't happen overnight. You say, the first time I met him, I was in love. And it was just like I knew it. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. It takes some time. You may have thought they were hot. You may have thought they were awesome. But you were not in love. Okay? Love is a relationship and a bond that takes nurturing. It takes watering. It takes growing. It takes the right nutrients to make it become bigger. You may have had a start, but you didn't have love in a full sense. And timing is one of those things, though, where seasons of our life can be separate from someone else. And you can only start growing things and things become prosperous in the right seasons. So if I am trying to grow watermelons today, I do not go out and plant watermelons right now. Do you know why? It's cold outside. Matter of fact, some days I get up at 4.30 in the morning, it's freaking freezing outside. It's cold. And if I go and plant a watermelon seed in the ground, guess what? Ain't nothing going to happen. You know why? It's not the season right now for that to be happening. But what happens is we have people who are not ready for relationships. We have people where the season of their life is not to commit into a great, 
deep, meaningful relationship, yet because of whatever reason, pressures, or just thought, they want to jump into trying to nurture something where their season of life is not for that. Maybe your season right now is waiting. Maybe your season in your life right now is to get the funds and to build up to where you can support a family correctly. Maybe your season right now is to find out who you are in Christ so that you can love your wife as Christ loved the church. Can I get an amen on that? Maybe your season is to find out you before you find someone else. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. Your seasons need to intertwine. If you're ready for a relationship and the person you're wanting one with is not, take that as a big clue. No, are not ready for a relationship. Don't try to force it. That's their season. That's where God has them at the time. Let them, if you love them, you will let them get through that season of their life to where the seasons intertwine. Timing. Timing. And timing is not... Timing is not, I'm 21, i got to get somebody quick. I'm going to be a spinster if I don't. That's not timing. Timing is your season of life where you're at. Timing is, am I truly ready for the responsibility of a husband? The responsibility of a wife? The responsibilities. See, here's the thing. Marriage and relationships are full, and y'all can say amen, are full of nothing but responsibilities. And if you're someone who has no responsibilities laid upon you, well, relationships and dating and stuff may seem fun, and yes, they can be a good time, it's nothing to build on because you don't even have responsibilities of your own, much less thinking about taking on the responsibilities of someone else. You're 14 and you come up to me, oh my goodness, my parents... My parents won't let me. They won't let me date another kid in my class. I'm tired of it. I'm mad. How old is the other kid? He's 15. Okay. Won't let you date him. I love him so much. He's the one for me. I know it. Listen, listen. I want to I pause you for just a second, okay? I changed girlfriends when I was 14. Dads are not looking at them and saying, your time is not right. Who They just let them go, and they're ending up with shipwrecked and harsh lives because they think that their season is now, and it's not. And honestly, love is not letting you go. Love is bringing you back and saying, wait. Amen. Amen. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. Love is waiting and telling you on timing. Number two. Number two. Trust. Now, I know we should our foundation be timing, knowing we are ready, knowing we are entering into a relationship and that we're ready for it. Number two is entering a relationship with trust. Trust is something I wrote this down. I want you to realize it. Trust. Nothing can be broken faster. It takes so long to build. Nothing can be broken faster, yet takes so long to build. See, you don't trust someone the first time you ever meet them. Most of us, oh, we may listen to their stories, and we may be like, wow, man, that guy's got some great stories. And as soon as we go away from their presence, in our mind, we're like, I don't think half that's true. Right? Because we just met them. We don't know them. We don't understand if what they're saying is right or not. So what do we do? We take time. We deposit time into someone, and that deposit of time starts to return. You know what, man? That was true. I found out. Remember that story, honey, that we questioned about so-and-so? And I told you, no way it's true. I found out that was 100% true. You know what happens? Now they're trustworthy. You start to say, well, you know what? They're not embellishing their story. I can trust what they say a little bit. And trust starts to build over time. Do you know why the courting dating process, why normally it takes time to go through? Because during that time, you're building trust. That's the whole key to it. You're building trust. You're building confidence in each other. You're wondering, is this the person that I need to be with? You're figuring out yourself. You're figuring out how the relationship will work. And over that time... When your timing is right, you start to build this thing called trust. Trust is actually in three areas. And there's three things that trust wants in a relationship. Number one, trust wants to believe that the person you're in a relationship loves you. Trust wants to believe that the person that I am with loves me. There's nothing more we want than to know that we're loved. Through good times, through bad 
through sickness and health, for my case, for poor or for poorer. We want to know. I get a lot of emails on that one. You want to know that no matter what season that you're in, love conquers all. You want to know that you're loved. Number two, the other thing about trust is this. Trust wants to know that you believe in me. Love, trust is knowing that my wife today, while she is teaching some of y'all's kids over next door, <laughs> that she backs me 100% and loves me and believes that what I'm doing is exactly what God wants me to do. She is trusting that I am following God as the head and believes that where I am leading is where God is taking us. And that's trust that has to be involved in that. Number three, not only is it trust want love, trust want belief. Number three, trust wants to know that you stand by us. Trust wants to know that you stand by us. Even when we make mistakes, Greg, we say something we shouldn't say, we make a decision that was the wrong decision. We act in a way that we shouldn't have acted. We make decisions that we never should have made. In spite of those, while you can disagree, you still stand beside the person that you're in a relationship with and lift them up anyway. Because like I said earlier, to give battle, give and take, while he may make some decisions you don't like, you're going to make some decisions that he doesn't like. And trust is where in the midst of having problems and working through them, I know you have my best interest at heart. That's what trust is. When trust knows you're loved, knows someone believes in you, and knows someone's going to stand beside you, nothing builds trust faster than those three things. And can I tell you something? That is what every one of us want None of us want a wife who the first time we, we mess up runs out the door on us. No one wants a husband who the first time they don't cook the meal just right kicks her out of the house. No one wants a spouse that's not willing to forgive and to work through problems and situations in our lives. And it's through that where we know we can trust they're willing to work with me that trust is built up even greater. Number three, and I'll be done. Not only should we have timing, not only should we have trust, but we also need to have truth. In this scripture in Matthew 7, and I'll be done with this, man, if you want to come up and just start playing, that'll be cool. Just play something soft. In the scripture we find that he starts out in Matthew chapter number 7, he says this, Whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, what are the sayings that he's talking about? You have to go to the preceding verses. He said, whoever does the sayings that I just said is like a wise man or a foolish man. In other words, whoever dwells and builds on what I just said, how they build and how they move forward is very important to a relationship, to, to a home. And he likens it to a house. It's very important for a foundation. So you have to go back and read what he says. And do you know what? He had just gotten through telling people in Matthew chapter number 7, in the preceding verses, he had just got through saying, there will be people who come up at the judgment of Christ and say, Lord, Lord, I did many wonderful works in your kingdom. And he said, depart from me, I never knew you. There's going to be people who act a Christian, who say all the right things, who want you to believe that they're super spiritual. But I want you to listen to these sayings. It's not going to be true. There's going to be some who have denied me and do not even know me. Then he turns right around. He says, now if you heed those words and understand that, you're like a wise man or a foolish man. In other words, it was this. He was saying, there will be people who claim to know truth, but have no clue what truth really is, which is me. See, for a relationship and a foundation to be firm, truth has to prevail. I believe that the greatest homes represented in America should be the homes within the local church. 
I believe we should have the greatest examples to show the world what a loving home with God at the center as the cornerstone of everything in our home should be. I believe we should show the world what a good Christian home looks like. And that starts not by being fake and being phony. It starts by, first off, you knowing the ultimate truth of who Jesus is and you've accepted him into your life. It's not enough to come and sit on a nice padded seat. I love these padded seats. It's not enough to get you into heaven. It's not enough to come and hear the preaching and walk out and say, great message, Pastor. I enjoyed that today. You were funny today. It's not enough. See, what you need is a personal relationship with Jesus. More so than a relationship with someone, you need a relationship with the one. Tweet that. More than a relationship with someone, you need first a relationship with the one. And that's Jesus. That's truth today. And with God at the center, it builds us. It builds on godliness. Truth builds on holiness. Truth builds on a pursuit after God. Truth builds on being a true Christian, not someone who is a Christian in name only. That's truth. And when we are real true Christians, focusing on a relationship with real true Christians, I believe our homes will shine so bright in a dark world that's looking for peace, they're looking for hope, and they're looking for something different than the discouraging mess they've made out of their lives in many places. Truth. Truth is holiness. Truth is a pursuit of God. I remember having this question asked in this in the South can be very controversial to some people. I remember somebody asking one time, would you let your child, would you let them date or marry into an interracial relationship? And sadly, in 2015, we actually can ask this. And here's what I said back to them. I don't care who my son marries. Their skin color, their nationality, origin, that's not my business. I don't care. Here's all I want to know. Number one, is he pursuing God? And number two, is she pursuing God? If both are pursuing God and the timing is there and truth is number one, I do not care. I will love her. I will love him. Truth is more important than discrimination. That's what I believe about it. Truth is most important. So let's go back to the three questions that I asked at the start. Number one, what am I looking for? Here's what you should be looking for. A relationship that actually connects you closer to God because of it. If your relationship, wherever you're at, is drawing you away from God, check yourself before you wreck yourself. You're going the wrong direction. It should be something that enhances your life even in a godly manner. From Adam and Eve, the very first husband and wife in the Bible, God created the wife to be a help meet for Adam. Now you can say that's just in the physical world and we know that there was part of that involved in the creation, but it was also in a spiritual realm because he walked and talked with God in the cool of the day. We know that. And Eve was now someone who helped him in all facets of his life. Marriage and a relationship, what am I doing it for, should be to connect you closer to God. Number two, what am I willing to give? Here's a one quick answer. One word. Everything. If you're not willing to sacrifice everything, if that's what it takes, you're not ready to be in a relationship. Number three, how do I change? Here's what it is. Shift our focus from what we want here to what God wants Maybe that shift right now is timing. Maybe right now you're not in the season where you can prolong and satisfy a meaningful relationship. You know the best thing for you is just tell the person the truth. I'm not ready. I need some time to get myself right. God wants me to get my heart right before I can make the choice I need. How do we change it? It shift our focus from everything that we want today and shift it to a passionate pursuit of Him. Here's something I heard someone say, and I can't remember who it was, but I think it's very, very appropriate here. 
If someone cannot catch you as you're running after God, you need to leave them behind. I think that's a great quote. If someone cannot catch you as you're running after God, you need to leave them behind. This morning as we stand, I want to tell you something for each one of you. Maybe you're standing here today thinking back to last week, still in pain about a past relationship or regret about something that's happened in your life. I want you to live in this realm today. John Gray said this at a color conference, I believe it was, just this past week. He said, we are children of a king. Don't settle for peasantry. We are children of a king. God did not design you it's not put down on someone else and be like, you're looking down. No, it's a spiritual question. You are a child of the king. God wants you to marry into other royalty. God wants you in a relationship with other children of the king. Don't settle for peasantry. So this morning, here's what I want to ask. Here's what I'm going to ask. For each person, for each person that would like us to pray over you. Ray and Karen, if you don't mind, come down. Greg, come on over this way. Javi and Mimi, are you in the back? I don't know if you're in the back. Come on down here as well. Come on down. Chris and Amy, come down. Some of our leadership team here. Here's what I want to do. I want you all to gather up here. Just come stand in the line if you don't mind. Sometimes we open altars. Sometimes we don't. A little old-fashioned on that a little bit, I guess. Here's what I want to know. Are you someone that right now you'd come forward and say, I want you to pray about the season I'm at. I want you to pray about where I'm at in my life. My relationship. Maybe it's with a spouse who's away from God. Maybe it's with a spouse who is in church, but we need to grow better together. Maybe it's someone who I'm, I'm wanting to enter a relationship and I don't know if it's right or not. I don't know where my season is. I believe prayer changes things. The multitude of prayer and wise counsel can make a huge difference in your life. Here's what I want you to do as we just play. I'm going to pray. I want you to come forward, grab someone and just say, would you pray over me that God will move in my life? I want to make sure that I'm passionately pursuing Him so I make the right decisions. I want you to come forward. Maybe your marriage is in trouble. Maybe you want prayer over your marriage. Today's the day. Come forward and just say, would you pray over us? Maybe you're someone who is dating. Maybe you're someone who is married. Maybe you're someone who's divorced and don't know what the future holds. I want you to come forward. That's right. Grab somebody, Rich. That's right, Lavina. Come on. Now, I'm going to pray. Lord, I love you this morning. And I'm thankful for passionate people. God, I want to give your gospel and your word. I believe, God, that who you are changes us. And when we're changed, our relationships change. I pray, God, we build on your foundation, your solid rock. Let you be the anchor. Let you be the center. Passionately pursue you. I pray for these people who come down and ask for prayer today. May they get that same direction in their life. It's in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. As the music just plays, I want you to come forward and grab someone. Come on right now and just say, just pray with me. That's all. down. Come on down. That's right. Maybe you're someone struggling right now. Get with someone. Just say, pray over me right now. That's right. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Don't wait. Don't wait where you're at. Don't let the devil say, well, it don't mean anything. Hey, one prayer can change your destiny and your direction. We have time for anyone today who's willing to say, I want to make sure I'm making the right steps with God in my life right now.
Where you're at, you can pray for them. I don't care if you reach out, stretch out your hand, asking God for greater things for them, whatever the case may be. Someone is getting help today, and that's what this church is all about. They're taking a next step in their relationship today. That's right. Church that prays together, stay together. I love this. Sometimes being still and just lost in the moment is one of the greatest things. Anyone else? 
Here's what I want to do in church. Here's what I want y'all to do. I want you to stretch out your hands towards Matt. Right now, starting this week, I want us to start praying a hedge of protection around him. Can we do that? He's in a part of the world that's unstable. Uh, Daryl has been over there before, told me stories. It's horrific the things they do out in public squares to people. Saw it with his own eyes. It's a crazy place in the Middle East. But I believe our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you're higher than any other. He can build a wall of protection around him that nothing's going to penetrate, nothing's going to get through. And I, I want to start praying right now as a church, collectively. So if y'all do this with me, I want you to stretch your hands out towards us. Man, I want y'all to grab, come around Mindy as well. We're going to pray over Matt. I want y'all to pray with us this morning. Lord, I'm coming to you right now on behalf of Matt as he's going to be uh, facing some times here in his life soon with a brand new baby and facing the, the reality of leaving and going away for a year. God, first, I want to pray protection and, and joy and peace for his wife, Miss Alicia, with the child. God, I pray for a, an easy delivery. God, I pray for a, a humble kid. I pray, God, for a child that is a goodly child, as you say in the Bible. One, God, that absolutely doesn't give many problems and, and is easy for her to, to maintain and handle while Matt's away. And God, I pray for Matt as he's going to a part of the world that's destabilized and no telling what he'll face. Right now, I pray your Holy Spirit starts preparing and prepping the way. God, build up the wall of protection around him. I pray, God, your angels are constantly with him, driving out the enemy, driving out the darkened forces that will come against him. God, I pray in this very moment right now that your spirit will constantly give him peace. Let him thrive and strive in a land where there is no peace. God, I pray that he'll be a light and a, to the community of all the fellow soldiers around him. May he constantly, God, shine forth your goodness and your glory so that others can see you through him. I pray God that people that may not even know him or speak his language will see that there is a difference in his life. God, your spirit is powerful. It crosses all bounds. It breaks down any wall. It crosses all language barriers. And God, your spirit in your light can shine in the darkest of darkest places. I pray right now, God, that everything that Matt touches is exactly what you want it to be. That you guide his steps. You go before him. You lead him him, God, into everything that he does. Keep him safe. Keep him out of harm's way. Do everything, God, to bring him home to his wife and to his lovely kids. I pray right now as a church that we keep him in our prayers. Keep him in our thoughts, God. May every day we wake up saying continue to protect him, God. It's out of love for our fellow man. It's out of love for a fellow believer today that we ask you to do these things. It's in your powerful, wonderful name, Jesus, that we speak this. Amen and amen. Y'all give him a hand. Thank you, man.